I grew up in circles where we sang about the blood a lot. And what that does to you is you start thinking that uh, Jesus' blood is this special thing, this uh, holy thing, okay? But throughout the rest of the Bible, the blood represented the life of the flesh. That's why throughout the Bible that flesh had to die. The animals in the Old Testament were a prophetic picture of flesh dying. So when Jesus came and he shed his blood on the cross, we've lost the picture of what, why the blood has to be shed. So Jesus was the perfect sacrifice. There was nothing wrong with him. There was no blemish. That's what those Old Testament pictures of the lamb and the ram and the oxen and so on. There was to be no blemish because it was a picture of Christ. All of this stuff that was happening, uh, sacrificing the animals, was prophetically building toward the sacrifice of Christ. Yeah. Now, when he shed his blood... That blood was not supposed to represent something special, like his blood was extra holy or had a healing yeah. power. And yeah. the idea was that throughout the Bible, the blood of the sacrifice had to be shed, sprinkled on the altar, and literally poured out on the ground. Mm -hmm. Why? Because you got to get rid of that life. You got to get flesh. rid of that life. Yeah. The life of the flesh. Yeah had to be discarded, yeah. thrown away. So when Jesus shed his blood, or his blood was shed on the cross, it was the same as those sacrifices where the blood had to come out of that body mm -hmm. and go onto the soil and just throw it away. Yeah. Because he is he's dying for us. See, he didn't have to die to the ways of the flesh because he was perfect. But his death is representing us. That's why he said, take up your cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. We also have to die to the ways of the flesh, okay? And it doesn't, I've, I've said this many times, even on our vid, my videos that I've done. The flesh is not your body. Yeah, it's the attitude against God. Yeah, it's the attitude of men yeah. who are against God. Yeah. Okay? Now, what happens in the church is when, when they talk about flesh or sin, they manufacture another list of sins. Right? Oh, they've got, they've got hundreds of sins that you're supposed to stay away from. You know what's missing? is the first commandment. Thou shalt not have any other God. Yes. Mm -hmm. You shall not have any other God before you mm -hmm. because God has made a covenant with these people. Yeah. yeah. It's like, that's why I've had people argue with me when I say it's like marriage because you're committed. Yeah, yeah. You will have no other. Yeah. And they'll argue and say, oh no, covenant is not like marriage. Are you kidding don't you get it? God is a covenant-keeping God. Mm -hmm. He's not going to go around the covenant, which is his word. He's, yeah. he's not going to do something else. Yeah. He is a covenant-keeping God, so he's going to keep his word because he and his word are one. What's happened in the world is they form their, their God first. Yeah, well, that's right. And then they try to fit Jesus into, into that yeah. image. Yeah. Okay, I've seen it many times. Okay, um, they'll they'll you know they'll teach the sovereignty of God. In other words, they're trying to say God manipulates, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and he's a narcissist. You never can trust him because you don't know what he's going to yeah. do. Yeah. Yeah. See what they do is they form that image of God. That's why what you said yesterday. Then God is more like. Baal, yeah. Yeah. which is a, a, a abusive master. Yeah. Yeah. Baal means master. Uh, and unpredictable. Totally. Yeah. 
unpredictable. Mm -hmm. That's a war against God himself. Yeah. Because yeah. he is not unpredictable. We've been taught that. Yeah. We've he, swallowed it. Yeah. His ways aren't our ways. Right. We heard it, basically heard it today. Did you? So they're quoting things like Isaiah 55. My ways are not your ways. Mm -hmm. Right? As higher than the heavens from the earth and so on. Yeah. So what they're doing is they're taking that out of context because he just said in the verse before, the wicked cannot know his ways. Yeah, yeah. Well, who's the wicked? Yeah. The carnal. The carnal, yeah. So what I'm teaching is that we can know God. We can know his ways from the word mm -hmm. because he's given us his word, yeah, yeah. which unfolds what he does over and over. That's why yesterday in that video, I kept saying that. We actually can read the Bible. But see, you've got to think about how much Bible you have to be full of in order to see that overview oh, yeah. of what God says and does over and over and over. Yeah. For you to say God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, we actually have to know what he is. What he was yesterday. What he was yesterday. What he is today. And what he so is that we can know what he is today yeah. and tomorrow. Yeah. We can't just assume God to be whatever we want him to be. Yeah. Yeah. See, when I came out of Word of Faith, I realized that I was teaching things wrong, right? We wanted God to be basically a genie, right? So that, that's my error, okay? But what about the rest of the church? What they like to do is attack another group and think, we're just fine. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it happens everywhere. We're just fine. We're not fine. Mm -hmm. Because we now have a false concept of God. We're trying to fit Jesus in because we, we've been taught that they are one. But how is he one? We have to reinvent Jesus then. Yeah. We're missing it. It's the other way around. You look at Christ first, because yeah. he is the express image of God. Then we can know God. That's the only way. You don't build your God first. <laughs> build your idol first and say, this is Jesus. Yeah, your man-made image of God, yeah. and then try to fit Jesus in there. I've often, when I, when I see teachers do that, They'll, they'll talk about their, their view of sovereignty, right? That God is manipulating people's lives and so on. And I'm thinking, where in Scripture do you see that? Exactly. You don't see God manipulating the daily life of Noah. No. You don't see God manipulating the daily life of Abraham. No. You see him keeping covenant yeah. Yeah. with who he made covenant he actually said, God said, I love those that love me. Yeah. But you have to love him as he is. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's like marrying someone and then hoping to change him. Well, then you don't love that person. Yeah. Well, people have done the same thing with God. Mm -hmm. Rather than accept him as he yeah. is, yeah. We try to remake him. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Because we're the narcissists. Yeah. We're the control freaks. Yeah. We want someone in control. Why? Because it's in our nature to control. control. Yeah. Yeah. So we want a God that's like that. Yeah. Well, God is not like that. Yeah. If, if it was all about the death of Christ... Then why, at 30 years old, when he started his ministry, why didn't he just go and die? Yeah. No, he had to teach yeah. for three years. He had to reveal his word. He had to reveal the character of God yeah. so that we knew which God we're being redeemed to. Yeah. Not any old image of God will do. No, it's specific yeah. who God is. And I like what you said, Mark. 
when we're looking at some of these and listening to some of these teachings on YouTube and such, there are certain things that are missing. Like you said, they're not talking about covenant keeping God. No. It's, it's not there. Yeah. Why? Because the concept of the covenant keeping God doesn't fit their concept of sovereignty. Yeah. See, God is sovereign. He's a Lord. Yeah. But he's not this manipulative narcissist that's going to love you one minute and beat the crap out of you the next minute. That is not what you see in Scripture. You don't see that in Christ. Oh, you know, but what people do, I, I watched one the other day, they'll say, well, God was pretty violent in the Old Testament, right? Like as if there was no reason yeah, exactly. for it. Yeah. You know, why did Babylon and Kate come and take the children of Israel into captivity? Because they were disobedient. Because they didn't worship God as he yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah. They wanted another God. Yeah. So he said, there you go. There you go. You want to worship that God? Well, I know the Babylonians worship that God. Off you go. <laughs> See if you like it. And they didn't. Yeah. 